Lianli Lanku 3. me that's good. The case is pretty good as well. The new Lian Li Lankul 3 case represents a significant update over the Lankul 2. I never reviewed the Lankul 2, but I did review a CyberPower PC back in 2020 that used the Lankul 2, and here's what I said at the time. This case is a Lianli Lankul 2 mesh, a case I think I saw at CES at the very start of this year, but have not done a review of. So this is the first time I've actually had this case on my bench as it were, and I'm very pleased to see it. Also, I'm gonna give you a heads up here, it looks like a blooming good case. I like that CyberPower PC, and I liked the case. And when I look down the features list for the Lankul 3, the changes over Lankul 2 are significant, which is just as well because the price has gone up. Lankul 2 ranges from £90 to £120 here in the UK. Lankul 3 starts at 150 for the black non-RGB version, and then the white non-RGB or black RGB versions are 160, and the white RGB version is 170. I have the white non-RGB, so it sits in the middle of that range. The first and most obvious change is that you don't get the option of mesh or non-mesh. All Lankul 3s are mesh. The second change is that this case comes with four 140 millimeter fans. And as I have the non-RGB version, I don't have the annoyance that the RGB comes with RGB fans up the front and a dumb non-RGB fan at the rear. I've got four matching fans and that pleases me. I like symmetry. Look at the specs and you'll see the non-RGB fans have a wider speed range than the RGB versions. So the non-RGB case is arguably better for enthusiasts. Lian Li lists a great many features for this case. The easiest way to give you a walkthrough of what's going on with it is to simply step down the main talking points and show you what those mean in practice. Feature 1. Open the left and right side tempered glass panels by the aluminium door handles. Not obvious what that means. It means this. In essence, you have a little bumper that knocks the glass off its magnetic uh, seal. And the same is true on the other side. You have to open the doors all the way, and then you can lift them off the hinge pins because the doors need to clear the top mesh panel to lift off. Top panel secured by a single thumb screw. Et voila. Feature number two, the top, front and bottom of the case can each fit a 360 millimeter radiator and that is simultaneously. In actual fact, the top, you can install a 420s, 3.140s. The bottom doesn't mean the floor of the case down here. It means on this power supply shroud here. So rad here, rad at the front, rad in the roof. I'll come back to that. Feature number three, the design of the storage trays has been revised to include modularity. Each unused HDD SSD tray can be individually removed. If we open this side mesh panel, simply hinges down, we can see we have a couple of drive mounts in the floor of the case. Go around the back and you can see we have better access. Let's take off these cable management panels. Get these cables out of the way completely. Remove the thumb screw, lift out like so. And then if I take one of the accessories, lock them together with another thumb screw, smaller thumb screw, and I can reinstall. And then lock it back down. If I want to perform the same trick on this drive caddy, comes out this way. In other words, it doesn't have to slide past this. This can remain in place. I can then take the second extra caddy and reinstall. 
오. 이렇게 take this and slide it say to the midpoint. So I've now got two drive mounts stacked up rather than side by side. I can use any of these location points to lock the caddy. I've got a huge range of movement. And if I don't want any three and a half inch drives, I can simply remove them in their entirety and rely on one, two, three SSD mounts, four, five SSD mounts. I have a total of five dedicated two and a half inch drives, plus obviously M.2s on the motherboard, and four more combo two and a half, three and a half inch mounts, all supplied with the Lancool 3 as standard. And if you're not interested in installing SSDs on that plate, then you can remove these four screws. open it up for maximum airflow. Now we've got pure mesh. Feature number four, new cable management design. This falls into two parts. First, we have two biomagnetic hinged backside cable covers, easier to open and still removable for unrestricted access. Or to put it another way, these two covers I already showed you briefly before. One and two. You will note this cover here has an opening there, which means that cables routed through these Velcro straps, come to those in just a second, will pass through this cover nice and easy. If for some reason you try and run cables down here, that ain't gonna work. Back to the feature list. Three plus five Velcro channel straps, four small straps help route the CPU and fan cables, and another small one for shorter 24 pin cables, while three large ones are for the remainder of the cables. Lots of words, what it really means is we've got loads of straps for all the cables. Or you could take another view of course, which is that once the cables are in place and you've got covers over them, who cares whether they're secured or not? Realistically, however, Lancol 3, it's for enthusiasts. So I think most enthusiasts will want the cables nice and tidy and under cover. The final feature, sliding front side cable cover also can mount distro plate by loosening a screw behind the motherboard tray. The bar can slide to adapt for wider motherboards and let the user customize the curve of their cables passing through. The principle is dead straightforward. If you have an ATX motherboard that goes to this point here, you want the cable cover pulled in tight beside the motherboard. If on the other hand you have an EATX board, that cover is going to foul the side of the motherboard. On the other hand, were the case to be constructed with the cable management panel over there, and you put an ATX motherboard in place, you've got quite a large gap between the side of the motherboard and the cable management plate. Just as a laugh, I'm gonna point out the specification does actually say that the Lancool 3 can also be used with micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards. And I just leave you to imagine what that might look like. Clearly ATX or EATX are the only two sensible options. We've got an ASUS ROG Rampage 6 Extreme motherboard installed, which is EATX. And as you can see, the power cables can easily go through, loop around the motherboard, and I can get my SATA cables there just nicely. And also just checks the side of this board, USB 3.1 Gen 1, USB 3.0. So that is how it looks with an EATX board installed. Let's take that out and put an ATX in its place. Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Master is an ATX motherboard, and now look, we have a significant gap between the cable management plate and the motherboard. But behold, it's all neat and tidy. One final thing before I get further into the case is just to remove the front panel, which is a pull. We have mesh front, and now you can see the fans in all their glory. There is an optional accessory filter kit that Leanne Lee lists. I can't find it on sale anywhere. I have no clue what the price of it is, but if you want extra filtration on your front and uh, mesh side panels, it appears to be out there somewhere, but right now I have no further details.
An aspect of the Lancool 3 that strikes me as very clever is the fact you can do a lot of the assembly outside of the chassis and then you put it together in modules. So we have this front fan bracket, press this spring-loaded lever here. Out it comes. We've also got the three 140mm fans installed at the factory. And there we go. If you want to put a radiator on all-in-one or swap out the fans for 120s, easy peasy to do it on the bench. The fan rack's actually more clever than it first appears. You can flip it around or invert it so you can have the fans inside the chassis should you wish, uh, the rad outside. If you want to give yourself extra clearance perhaps to get away from the graphics card or to move hardware in from the front panel, that's easy to do. A point to note about the 140s on the front is that the maximum radiator you can install on the front is a 360 which means of course you're using 120mm fans, in which case you'll be moving the 140s likely into the roof of the case. I think it's more likely you'll leave the fans alone in the front and you'll put your liquid cooling or your AIO in the roof. The roof of the case, we have another rack secured by these two screws. Locates, uh, so we have these tags that go into slots, so it only goes the one way. And you will note a huge number of mounting slots and also some holes for airflow. So you can, if you choose, offset your cooler away from your RAM. You have the capability in this case of putting in very tall RAM and using liquid cooling. That's quite a rare feature. This rack supports up to a 420mm radiator, so putting a lot of liquid cooling in the roof of the case, that's an entirely practical thing to do. And then we have the power supply shroud, which has a series of three mounting brackets. These screws are a touch fiddly and probably my least favourite part of this case. I've got quite a few screwdrivers and this from... It's a Fantex toolkit. Works best. The screws don't appear to be Phillips, and they're not really posy either, so whether there's some sort of Japanese standard, I'm not quite sure. So we have a series of mounting brackets that you can use for mounting SSDs, or if you choose, you can open the rack up and mount fans instead. So that opens up the rack for cooling or fans. Remove these screws. And the rack comes out so you can easily install your fans or your rad outside the case. You won't be surprised to hear there are a few gotchas involved with installing radiators in the Lancool 3. I'm going to extremes by installing two EK Quantum Surface radiators. The P, performance, is thick. The X, the extreme, is thicker. But look, you're not going to get a rad in the front at the same time as having rads in the floor power supply shroud and top. The reason obviously is that quantum surface radiators are very large. There's a, a couple of other things to note here. If I remove these two screws, I can move the entire rad rack to its rear position, which is hard up against the PCI Express expansion slots. Uh, so if you want more access to the expansion side of things, you'll probably have the rad fan rack to the front. It doesn't make the blinds bit of difference in terms of radiator clearance if you're using a chunky rad. If you're using slim radiators simultaneously in this position and the front, I'm quite sure you'll need to be back there. The other thing is the 420 rad in the roof. To install a 420, you leave the rad rack in place. You have to remove the rear fan. So it's doable, it's not particularly practical. It is possible to install three radiators simultaneously. Here we have two EK Coolstream SE360s and an AlphaCool Nexus ST3280. Et voila! However, I predict you will find it tricky to connect from one rad to the next. 
there's not a lot of working room. My recommendation is if you want to go custom loop, install one or two radiators, probably power supply cover and roof, possibly roof and front. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that unlike the Lianli 011 range, there's no option for side ventilation. There are mounts that you could use for mounting a distro plate or a pump. So three rads possible, my view is not a great idea. A feature that caught my eye in the user guide is that you can reverse the front panel. More correctly, you can move the front I.O. from the top of the panel to the bottom. The assembly of ports and connectors is held to the chassis with two screws. There are two female threads at the bottom. And then it's just a question of flipping over the front panel and uh, moving the logo plate. I think this configuration looks a bit odd. For the front I.O. to make any sense at all down there, your piece is going to have to be up on your desk and probably pulled right to the front so you can actually plug things in to those ports. But on the plus side, that top front corner is now opened out. And remember, the fill port for your liquid cooling is on that top bracket in that approximate area. So if you're going custom loop and if that front corner is important to you, shifting the front I.O. down is going to help you. Also, it's worth pointing out or reminding you that this is the non-RGB version, so I do not have the two control buttons on there for the RGB. Personally, I think most people will leave it well alone. The hardware going inside the test PC. This is Zeus Tough Gaming X570 Plus motherboard, Ryzen 9 5900X processor, Sabrent Rocket 4.0 SSD, some Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3600. Power supply is this Fantex Amp 1000 White Edition, which seems appropriate. That's made by C Sonic. Graphics card is this Sapphire AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT, which is a reference design. And for the cooler, I'm using this Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black rather than an AIO or custom loop. Uh, there's a, a little bit of logic behind that. I said oh, a couple of weeks ago now, uh, when I was doing a piece on EK quantum surface radiators, that Dave Alcock, formerly of Alphacool, now of EK, was going to be coming to visit me and do um, a workshop, really, on their new quantum surface radiators. Dave recently told me that he's ordered me the missing crossflow radiator. Uh, which is truth be told the radiator I'm most keen to see and uh, once that arrives Dave's gonna come and visit me and we'll go through the details of their rads and he doesn't know it yet so hi Dave uh, but my plan is that Dave's gonna do a liquid cooling build in this case so I'll leave this hardware installed remove the uh, Noctua and Dave can show us how it's done with EK hardware there we go, that's my plan. Let's see how well it works out. The build was dead straightforward. The Lancol 3 can accommodate any hardware pretty much that you throw in its direction. It's obvious I could have installed extra fans and extra drives without any difficulty whatsoever. And the cable clutter, such as it is, is kept under control by all those modesty panels. Finished result, very acceptable. During thermal testing, I ran the fans at five different speeds. The four case fans have a nominal maximum speed of 1800 RPM. In practice, it's actually 1750 RPM. And the two Noctua CPU cooler fans, maximum speed 1500 RPM. I started by running all the fans at 800 RPM, and it sounded like this. Then I increased the speed of all the fans to 1000 RPM, which sounded like this. Next, we have all the fans at 1200 RPM, which sounds like this. And then all the fans running at 1500 RPM, sounds like this. Finally, all the fans running at 100%, so the Noctua is at 1500 RPM, the Lian the case fans at 1750 RPM. Sounds like this.
For my temperature testing at a lively 28 degrees Celsius here in the UK, I ran a combination of Cinebench R23 and TimeSpire stress test, those tests running simultaneously, which gives us a system power draw of 430 watts at the wall socket, the CPU is pulling about 145 watts, the graphics about 190 watts, the rest is the system including obviously all those fans. Let's start off with the CPU. So with the fans running at 800 RPM, CPU temperature 73. Increasing the fan speed to 1000 RPM, the temperature dropped to 70. Increasing fan speed further to 1200 RPM, we took off 1 degree, now 69. And at 1500 RPM, the temperature dropped further to 67 degrees. Ramping the case fans all the way up to 1750 RPM made no difference still 67. Onward to graphics. Our RX 6800 XT runs at 77 degrees with the fans at 800 RPM. Increasing fan speed to 1000 makes no difference, still 77. Increasing fan speed to 1200 RPM, we see one degree benefit. The graphics are now at 76. And with the fans running at 1500 RPM, the graphics card is at 74. Increasing the Lian Li case fans all the way to 1750 RPM makes no difference. Graphics still at 74. In conclusion, what do I think of the Lian Li Langku 3? Broadly speaking, as you've probably gathered by now, I like it a lot. But let's look at the specific pros and cons. Pros, the good points. Designed for airflow, it's got mesh panels and 4x1 40mm fans. Thermals were very good. You've got loads of options for cooling. You've got masses of storage bays. Modders will find it easy to dismantle. Not my personal cup of tea, but it's the sort of thing that appeals to our James hugely. And the clever design allows you to remove the fan racks and the drive bays with ease. Cons, the negative points. It's big and tall and it requires plenty of space. The smaller screws are very fiddly. As I showed you, I tried a number of different screwdrivers and it wasn't until I lucked upon the one in the Fantex toolkit that things took an upward turn. Up to that point, I was suffering. There's a significant price jump from Lankul 2 to Lankul 3. Lankul 2 is very much a budget case. This is not. A chunk of that is 2022 because the world's gone slightly insane, but you do get significantly more hardware in terms of fans of the Lankul 3 than you do with the Lankul 2. And on the subject of fans, those front 140mm fans won't line up with a 360 or 240 radiator should you choose to install one in the front. Not necessarily a problem for you, but it might be. In conclusion, would I recommend that you buy the Lankul 3? Now this is a tricky one. I like this case. In the past, I would have happily used it. However, I'm personally using a Lianli 011 Mini at the moment, and I'm not going to switch from the Mini to this. My reason is I use loads of storage drives, but four of them are M.2s. I only have two hard drives and two two and a half inch SATA drives. I say only, that's still quite a lot. The point is I don't need all the options that this case offers for cooling and for storage and therefore I don't need such a large case. The 011 Mini works very nicely. This is of course a lovely position for Lian Li to be in. They've got this case that suits one sector of the market, they've got that case that works for another, they've got their tiddlers that work for another. They've got things covered. So well done Lian Li, you've done a blooming fine job. The Lankul 3, it's a belter.